advance for game number two, Jin Air versus Samsung. And I'm curious to see where, uh, where Jin Air is going to go with this one. What they're going to put Kuzen on. There are Nar and Gragas going down right off the bat. Sivir will be removed from Fury, causing a lot of problems at the same band. So they may want to go for the jungle Italy once again if they're taking out Sejuani and the Gragas as hard engaged champions that can really ruin a team fight for Nidalee that needs a lot more time Alistar. to prepare poke. And there is the Alistar. So they're going to get either Callista or Bard. Yes, the Bard. Let's see which one Samsung wants to give them. Because I feel like whatever one doesn't get banned, you pick it, right? Well, you may not first pick it if you're Jyn Air, depending on how confident in their Bard play. So Samsung may have a plan to first pick Bard on the red side and take it away, even though Luna's not playing. Yeah. We'll see if Wraith can live up to that skill in the champion. Bard is available for the first time in a Jyn Air game now. And they might grab this Rek'Sai first. And, it, you know, we don't know if, if Wraith can play Bard. So they don't need to pick it right away. Apparently Jyn Air thinking that Wraith doesn't know how to play Bard. Or, at least or not being afraid enough. of it. That's the other option. I suppose it's also true. Pretty big adaptation, though, considering that Janair banned TF and Rek'Sai in the previous game, this time leaving the Rek'Sai up for their, themselves to first pick, but not being worried about Crown's ability to create picks on that TF. And his TF is pretty good, so. Interesting. So TF Bard. Come on. Well, Samsung, if they go with this Thresh, too. Not a bad pick. Obviously, Wraith, a pretty good Thresh player. Uh, that has been a champion he's made his mark on, but it would also show that they're not going to be taking the bar. True and up. there's the Nidalee again, so no surprise okay. there. Want to get that one out of the way. And This is where we start to wonder if Samsung has much depth, because we see the same bands, despite the fact that the Sivir and the Alistair were taken away. Two champions out of the first three taken by Samsung in their last draft, and they paired well with the Nidalee to create a pick and follow up on that poke damage. Well, taking away the LeBlanc may not be a bad idea as well for Jyn Air. We'll see if Kuzan can play it. Maybe this Rise, too. It'd be interesting. There we go. Oh, come on. Don't do this to me. <laughs> They're going to do this to me, aren't they? They are going to do this to you. The LeBlanc, I think, is definitely coming in. Uh, you can't counterpick it anyway, so you might as well take that very safe champion. Has a lot of good matchups. Rarely loses in the mid lane. The dream is dead. I give up. My hey. hype my hype is gone forever. Doa, why is your hype gone? Nautilus is okay, a top, could, is a top be, laner on Jyn Air. That's true. It could be Trace playing Nautilus, yeah. Trace. True. Has played Nautilus professionally in the top lane. So let's just hold off I there, suppose. buddy, on the despair. I just want to, you know, temper it a little bit, you know? <laughs> it's too it's too much of an emotional roller coaster for me, Monty. <laughs> I can't take this anymore, man. Trace has also played the Rek'Sai top in solo queue. And they were taking it away because Kuve was very good on top lane Rek'Sai. That's one of the reasons why it was banned and prioritized so heavily by Jyn Air in this game. Right. All right, Ryze and Lucian possibly for Samsung. Ryze and, uh, yeah. Hmm. Well, Fury obviously very strong on that Lucian. It's a good pickup. There it is, okay. Interesting. So going for a, more of a lane bully right here. May send Pilot back to a poke-based champion. Um, just to stay out of Lucian's way early on, play a little bit safer. They have the burst from LeBlanc already, so not lacking in terms of damage and may just be the Nautilus. Yep. Well, maybe they just thought I wanted it support with glowing yellow eyes. Like, no, that's the wrong one. <laughs> well, this does make sense. They have a huge tank line to deal with a lot of the poke coming in from Nidalee. The Nautilus also able to abuse the Nidalee, because if the Nidalee walks too far forward, you just hit R on her and she can't do anything anymore. Right. As well as the, the same thing coming in with Maokai. They have a lot more engaged this time to help out with some of the poke. There it is, Corky and Maokai. I knew the hype was dead. 
So what's the last pick going to be for Samsung here? Uh, do you think this is going to be a top, rain, a top lane rise, or is Crown going to try it out in mid? Could Looks be, like it's going to be top. Could be a mid lane rise. Crown playing the Azir wouldn't surprise me. That has been his go-to champion when he's had it available. And he does now. Again, this is a lot of AP coming in. They still have a bully lane, so it'll depend on how fast Samsung's able to push down those towers. But Jin Hera has so many tricks up their sleeve to deal with this composition in the late game. Not very reliable a gauge on Samsung this time. This reminds me so much of the game against the Ku Tigers, where their composition was great in game one. But when a few pieces got taken away, it sort of stopped making sense. Yeah. No, I see what you mean. Like, you don't have the Sivir anymore. You don't have the Alistair to headbutt pull the gauge or the Sivir to speed everybody up to capitalize on that. So this is a composition that's quite easily kited. Well, they're going to go with it anyway. Azir locked in, so it will be a top lane rise then for Kuve. I'm and afraid the same fate may play out here for Samsung as it did in their last best of three. Well, Jinair looking like they're coming into this one pretty strong, but you know, that said, Jinair, you know, did make some errors last game that were kind of comp independent. You know, it was Samsung really kind of taking advantage of things like Jinair going in a little bit too far on the turnaround and bot lane, stuff like that. So we'll see. We'll see what Samsung can do with this. Yeah, certainly Samsung executed well, but they, they just yeah. had so many tools to execute that composition, whereas the window for outplay here is much more narrow. Right. And they still require quite a bit of scaling with this composition. They have to rely on Fury to have another excellent early game to get them the gold they need. Oh, well, he's got a strong champion to do it with in Lucian. And I mean, Lucian Thresh is a pretty terrifying bot lane. Indeed it is. Pilot going back to a comfort pick on Corky this time, not having so much luck with the Vayne, but he will have better wave clear with that champion at the very least and have increased mid game presence instead of really never coming into his own in right. that last one. Well, this is the moment where Samsung can prove us all wrong and show that they can win games beyond the first one. And doing that against Jinair would be quite the statement for this team. Meanwhile, Jinair trying out their new mid laner. See what he can do on this little block. It's time to get in the game and see who comes out on top? All right, welcome to Summoner's Rift. Engineer Green Wings versus Samsung. And Kuzan in his first game ever in the booth. Rocking the LeBlanc. That's right. The crown. <laughs> Gonna dance like a bird. So, Kuve on top lane rise again. Worked out for him in the first game, but he had a lot of tools to help him close gaps with that Sivir ultimate in order to land those rune presents and still had to blow flash for them pretty much every time. Right. Will he be as effective in this game where it's going to be even harder for him to land a rune prison. Obviously, the synergy with Nidalee is great for Eve's ganks. But Eve didn't really get a chance to gank because of the lane swap that came down. And Pilot going to recall right here. Will we see the 2v2 or will we see the 1v1? Looks like we will see the 2v2 this game as Pilot's recall. Just going to send him back Many for a little bit of healing. Yeah. Trace going to stack some saplings up to get a fast level advantage while Eve starts on the top side of the map with a leash from Kuve. Hmm. And so, I feel like Samsung's gonna be happy with this 2v2. Pilot and Sweet are gonna need to be pretty careful in this bot lane. Fortunately, they have a very tanky champion to be careful with. Yeah, so it does help. It's like no Krug takeaway for the Jyn Air dual lane. Just gonna leave it to Chaser and then back off. But speaking of advantages, Gromp is gonna be taken by Wraith and Fury. Ah, okay, so they will be coming into lane with a little bit of an edge experience-wise. So Eve gonna start topside. Instead, that means that, there's this Rise? Going to be a little bit behind in terms of experience as Trace went ahead and took the fast Wolf Camp. So slight advantages on both sides, depending on whether you're in top or bottom lane. Now, and we'll see how Kuzan does in this 
mid lane too. Well, a pilot just got chunked right there, right after Fury and Wraith hit level two. Oh yeah, well, no big surprise there. That I mean, tends to happen. Yeah, falling back to the turret immediately. Didn't expect the, well, they should have expected the Gromp because Rise was late to lane, so there are two leashes like that. Could have been a fake, but more than likely. And Fury warding right as Chaser comes in here. Fury dashing away, they get the knockup onto him. A little bit of damage, they get the flash out of the Samsung AD carry right away. A little bit of a dangerous ward there for Fury. Yeah, and Sweet and Pilot not level two yet, so they couldn't capitalize on that. Actually, Whoa, Fury nice grab, grab on there. The Fury That's there. huge. Yeah. Wow, that was really Already big. burning his pot, so Fury playing too far up. Gets hit by the dredge line. Yep. Chaser coming in for a gank. Oh, Here going we go. in on the crown. Flash. There's a flash knockup. Crown could be in a bit of trouble. Pops that barrier. Still has flash available. He's going to use it. Meanwhile, Eve coming in, missing that spear. Chaser's going to go on to him. Eve getting very low here. Crown turns with a bit of damage from that sand soldier. They pop the passive so for the block. So many summoners burned, though. Two in the mid lane for just the jungler flash and the ignite. So it's going to prompt Crown to play very cautiously. And really going to commit Eve to counter ganking in the mid lane as well and not being able to take advantage of the fact that there is this rune prison to help him out in the top side. Right. Kuzan in a pretty good spot having his flash still available, I would say. Another Doran's ring picked up by Crown coming back to lane, so he'll be a little bit stronger, but it looks like Kuzan's going to do something similar. Picking up a couple items himself. So when it's all said and done, things about even overall so across the board. Yeah, some interesting jungle pathing, though, from Chaser. Definitely the bottom side didn't expect him to be there at three minutes, ganking them, considering they knew that he started on bottom side. So that was, now. he's only now going for his blue buff. So that was a little bit tricky from Chaser, and then going for the double gank right away. So a bit of unpredictable early pathing, early ganking, trying to use that power of Rek'Sai to get his lanes kick-started, and it worked. Uh, now his bottom lane doesn't have to worry about the fact that Lucian is this lane bully early on. His pilot has enough fuel to kind of hit six safely at this point. And his mid lane, too, getting that early pressure down, making Crown scared to move too far forward. Pretty much. You're getting some jungling done on his side as well, too. And will we see him show up in the spot lane, maybe? Death sentence attempt from Wraith, but not really hitting anybody. Anybody of note? Just a minion. Minions are nobody, huh? Yep. Well, I stand for minion suffrage, Doa. They should get a vote Dude. on what happens to them. Minions. They shouldn't have to mindlessly spawn at the Nexus and march down the lane and fight for literally no reason. Minions are a homework assignment for amateur mages. That's what they are, <laughs> according to the lore, anyway. That lore doesn't exist anymore, Doa. I don't know what you're talking Some about. Some of it does. Does that part exist? I don't know. <laughs> no one knows what exists or doesn't exist at as this part point, of the lore. At this point, I feel like I can just decide. You know? <laughs> I can just, like, take what I need. Well, Riot's not deciding, so you might as well. Somebody's got to do it. I'm happy <laughs> to pick up the mantle of lore leadership. God help us all. <laughs> no, and, man, it's a good thing. Trust me. And that's how everyone used the Force. Oh, that's right. Sounds good. Wraith getting a little bit caught here. Nice, nice play. play. Yeah. All right. Another attempt by Chaser, but easily deflected by... Wraith and Fury. Yeah, staying far enough from that wall separated as well. No flash there to guarantee that knockup either, so nothing really of note going to happen. Eve will be prompted to take away the Gromp in that situation. Makes Sometimes you just feel like taking that Gromp. Gotta take it, man. Gotta yep. kill that stupid frog. Get the Gromp. Do you really kill it, though? I don't think so. Oh, crown. Dodging out of the way, but oh, still taking chains. a lot of damage from Kuzan. Yeah, the chains were still there. Here comes Eve, though. Spear goes right through the middle. Crown, though, able to do a lot of parting damage on his way out of lane. That chaser was there just for the backup in case it was necessary, deterring Eve from committing to that with the pounce. And that'll be it, but Crown. Oh, oh. grab onto Sweet. Luckily, as explored earlier, Sweet is pretty tanky. He's going to go right back in onto Wraith, actually. Fury dodging around, putting the hurt onto Pilot there. Yeah, dropping the Ignite a little early, Sweet, onto Wraith, so that actually didn't do 
as much as they had hoped. So in a way, Samsung winning that trade just because they were the ones to get the summoner spell out on a non-preferential target while Wraith held the trigger on his. True. Now, meanwhile, up in the top lane, Trace has Kuve pretty much pushed back. Tiny little CS lead there. But Kuve, you know, not in any hurry to get on the map and do something. It's just sort of a farm fest right now. Oh, here we go. Back in on the crown again. And crown with uh, no flash just yet. It's almost up. He's got the barrier, though. Doing a lot of damage, but taking a lot himself, too. Chaser could come. Underneath the wall when the cooldowns comes back. Prey Seeker, sweet, gets first blood. <laughs> That's how you do it, man. All of a sudden, oh. Nautilus just walks <laughs> in from nowhere to steal the kill with I'm his sorry. Z. Did your mid laner want that kill? Sorry, I'm here to auto attack. <laughs> and Riptide. That's right, that's right. All right, sorry guys, I did my job. Back to the bot lane for me. <laughs> thanks for thanks for getting the uh, thanks for getting that one started for me. Yeah, picking up those mobility boots, putting them to use immediately. And finding a kill quite early on. Pilot maintaining that CS after that nice early gank. He's been farming up here on the Nidalee to relatively nice advantage, but that assist should help out in terms of the goal. Kuve is going to walk right into a tri brush with a Rek'Sai in it. Who gets the ward down without any ill effects? Sure enough. Well, spot lane isn't the most exciting thing we've ever seen, is it? No, but it will start to get exciting. Jin Air being very un active on the map early. They've got to hit the earlier power spike. Double tier for Samsung, so they're a ways out for really doing anything. And the question is, how fast can Pilot start sieging some of these turrets with the Sheen and making his presence felt in the mid lane and the top lane to continue to start to push down these outer, outer towers? Well, he's got the ult already, so it's kind of a question of when Janair decides, decides to start moving him around a bit. Yeah, he's got to take down that bottom one, but the poke coming in is going to be quite helpful. Here comes Chaser. There we Chaser. go. Flash twist advance onto Kube. Kube taking a lot of damage. Got that flash, moving away. Is he tanky enough? I don't know, man. Trace diving right now. Prey Seeker helps Trace pick up the kill. Chaser adding a little bit of damage on, but Samsung responding appropriately with that first dragon. Yeah, Chaser has Void Rush, though, so he could come down here if he wants to. Looks like they're not going to commit to that. Instead, Chaser going to set his sights on the red side jungle of Samsung, give up that dragon just to keep the rise down. But snap response from Samsung on the top lane. Gank, hmm. they will get the dragon. Does ganking rise really do a lot for you, though? Sure, it show, slows down his item progression pretty nicely. Hmm. There was a time where Ryze dying in lane a couple times early on didn't really make much of a difference. Yeah, um, but some items have changed with Ryze too, uh, where it becomes more impactful right now. He's not going to get as tanky due to the changes in Banshee's Veil, vale, where it doesn't supplement his damage as well. Um, and some of the changes to his kit also. Uh, he's not as reliable in terms of damage now that some of his abilities are skill shots. But yeah, this is, I mean, slowing him down means that you open up a larger window where you have time to maneuver before you get a late game rise spitting out damage. True enough. Well, not, not really behind in CS at all, these. Just a tiny bit. Things still being fairly dead even almost CS wise between the two, or between the three lanes. Yeah, it's just a couple of kills that are separating Jyn Air at the moment, but yep. they're, they're gonna start doing something soon. Kuzan actually going, instead of a Morello Namakar, going for a Chalice this game. Looks like he was just trying to deal with some of the poke coming in off the crown. Wow, it goes in on the crown there. Yep, crown. Just pushing him off ever so slightly. And that'll allow Kuzan to farm up a little bit more underneath his turret. Still, Pilot having to go back for the Krugs right there. They're scared of this, and I would be uh -oh. too. Spear right to the death sentence, and yep, Sweet has a reason to be scared. Tried to get the pink ward in. Didn't expect three people in that <laughs> rush. Yeah, seriously. A little bit of a face check right there, but even 
if Pilot had been there. Unlikely you could make a play. Now this is going to mean that Chaser gets an angle on the top side. There's the chilling spike. Yep, that's right. They're just going to dive this easily, take him out again. And Jenner is starting to camp this top lane pretty heavily, but it looks like they're going to have to give up the bottom tier one for it. This has been such an MO from Samsung. Eve camps the duo lane. Eve sits in lane with the duo lane and autos the turret to death with the lane so that it opens up some rapid rotations from Samsung and a continued snowball of turrets. Meanwhile, Trace has done hardly anything at all to the top side. They're going to try and take away the red buff, but same thing that we saw from Samsung last game. Eve was at least prowling around Fury's lane, trying to push people off the towers. Trace just punching that turret, but I don't think it's going to go down before Fury and Wraith can get there and turn things over. This time, however, oh, pretty close. Pilot and Sweet already knocking at the tower gates, and they have that sheen to make short work of it. Rise gets there. He will be able to ult to clear out the wave. Yeah, it's still not going to be easy to maintain that defense of that turret over time, I suppose. Oh, there we go. Death Sentence just barely misses Trace. That could have been a little bit risky if that would have hit. No flash for Trace right now. And Well, with a cowl, he probably would have died. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Doesn't really have any defensive items against the AD that Fury would be doing. Fury getting fairly close to his Infinity Edge, too, I imagine. This time, however, Chaser's just going to go and position himself to hold in the top side. Kuve has to come back around. Doesn't quite have his ultimate back up yet. Now he does, but no use on that. The tower should be getting chipped slowly. Trace wants to recall. And yeah, so Jenner answering with the turret this time. Not happy with how things snowballed out of control out of those with those turret kills in the first game. This time playing a lot better, a lot more aggressively on objectives instead of sitting back while Fury just gobbles up all of your turrets. Mm -hmm. Close call with the spear there. Dragging up in about a minute 30 again. We'll see if Samsung can claim another one. Who's on a little bit up in CS? Oh, Crown just unafraid to fight him, too. Could be a pretty explosive duel in this mid lane at some point. And the help of some of these junglers. Chaser wants a giant spell first here. Interesting pickup. That's something that yeah. you see typically on a lot of jugglers. Yeah, maybe and they there are. There we go. They want to shut down Fury. Fury all by himself and He's all kinds of dead. Teleport coming in here. Going in on the Trace a little bit. The turret doing oh. some damage. Kuve got there in time. Chaser taking a lot of hits, but Fury so low already. Flashing away, dodging, fade away, calling. He comes back in. Kuzan appears, gets the kill. There goes Kuve as well, too. So Jinner with a big win up in the top lane. Here comes the rest of Samsung, though. The spear comes in. They're going to get a bit of revenge here. On to Trace. Chaser in a bit of trouble as well here at Zero with the kill. Crown picks up that one. Meanwhile, Kuzan deflecting some of those Sand Soldiers. Yeah, Kuzan's Crown not done yet. Away. What? Now he is. Oh, he that was weird. He, like, bounced off the Emperor's Divide in a wall. I don't know. That was a very strange interaction. I'll have to see that one again. <laughs> Not quite sure what happened there. Uh, Kuzan, though, coming up with a couple of kills. And you could see them turning onto the turret immediately instead of Fury before they had actually drawn aggro because the teleport came in. So they wanted to try and focus down the turret before the teleport could complete and then kill Fury. But Kuzan already on the roam. And so now they actually take down the turret. There is Kube. Remember, he doesn't have a lot of damage yet, so he's not the most useful in some of these fights. Kuzan flashing forward to get there in time, picks up the kill, and then when they start to split Eve and everyone collapsing, but Sweet hot on their heels, and Trace will go down, but Wraith also will fall after getting healed right there. Knocked down by Kuzan as well, and I'm not exactly sure what happened. Oh, I wanted to see it again. I wasn't really sure what happened with that interaction. It looked like he hit what the Emperor's Divide in the wall, like bounced around a little bit. It was a bit odd. Oh, meanwhile. Dragon gets taken by Jenner. Kuve taking some damage from Trace here. Trying to get away from this Maokai. It is not easy. Twist Advance comes in. Kuve pops that ult to run out. When you can get soloed by a Maokai, I don't really think that's a great champion. <laughs> yeah, it's not going well. 
I'm glad to see Trace playing a little bit more aggressively. Obviously, Trace has a lot of items to deal with the damage coming in from Rise, but he doesn't even have a completed Rod of Ages yet, and we're nearly 18 minutes into this game, so that means he's not even going to hit his full power until, again, 28, 30 minutes. That's usually where you're looking at with the current Rise builds, and it's too late. It's too late. And he's so, he's so useless before that. It's not that he's scaling and he has some level of power where maybe he has like a power spike like Kog'Ma does where he gets the loot Zeko but still has the tier. No, he's just bad up <laughs> until he completes Seraphs and the Rod of Ages is stacked. Well. Yeah, well, it's like we talked about. I mean, Samsung not looking like they can adapt easily to a second game, you know? Well, it's they get that one win, and they have this one comp that's really highly, finely tuned and prepared, and then they try and run it again, but some of the pieces are suddenly missing from the yeah. engine, and it sort of sputters and dies. Let's see what they have for game three, though. I mean, this one's not over yet, but it's uh, looking fairly good for Jenner. I, I'm trying to picture what a Samsung win looks like in my head, and it pretty much just involves them getting a pick with Nidalee. Um, I think it involves mechanics from Azir and Lucian. And Sphere didn't do bad in that last fight. They could still have that big outplay, of course. Right. And it's close enough that things could turn around. Well, they've got champions that at least allow the possibility of that, you know? They do, but now they're behind in turrets with the scaling champions, whereas last game they were ahead. Right. Pilot needs to start thinking about switching over to the mid lane soon and actually making a more aggressive play onto that mid turret so they can just continue snowballing, continue that siege, and get an even bigger gold lead than the one they have already. Jhenair getting a lot of really good wards down in the enemy jungle as well too, so doing a good job of taking advantage of the edges that they've had to just get a lot of map control out of it. And this mid turret is probably not gonna live too much longer. Yep, that is about that. And so all three outer turrets down for Jenner. Only one on the side of Samsung. Trace gets hit by a spear, but just not doing very much damage yet. Nope. Though Nidalee does stack that tier awfully fast. Actually, his tier is fully stacked currently, I believe, because I'm not seeing it stack right now while she's mm. in the jungle, so. Oh, that's true. Usually the, the tier is fully stacked on a jungle diddly if you buy it early by about 18 minutes. Because Pounce will stack it without using any mana. Quite a little handy ability. Right. Yeah, it's probably getting pretty close. If not, already done. And there's a blue buff steal for Jin Air. Yeah, Samsung, they're going to need that big outplay if they want to have any chance to take this game because they lost map control. They've you know kind of lost the ability to have like a big straight up team fight. Now their jungle getting entirely taken over yep. as well. So that's going to not allow Eve to continue farming up and getting magic penetration that he needs pretty badly at this point onto his Nidalee. And slowly just pushing forward. Looks like Jenner has had enough for the moment. Want to recall and go pick up some more items where they commit to another fight, but Trace just putting on immense pressure at the top side. I suppose Dragon is coming up fairly soon too, so it is time to start to think about that. They've already got pretty good vision, so it's time to make sure they've got all the items they can. Yeah. It's intelligent timing. Play it nice and slow. Kuzan having a really good performance for his first professional game, actually, especially what impressed me was his roam into the top side and his ability to beat out Crown to that roam and actually committing to a flash to join the fight to get the ignite and kill Fury. That was quite good. Yeah. Kuzan certainly having a pretty good first game so far. Dragging up in about a minute now and Jynair starting to sort of gather around that. Both top laners with the teleport. So they can join it at any time. But again, it just doesn't seem like Kube is going to really be able to be impactful, you know, in any fights that happen in the near future. And yeah, Kuzan quite young, actually. He just turned 18 in January. Wow. He's a bit young. 
I was curious if they weren't using him last season because he was 16 and he ah, just turned okay. 17, but that is not true. Just developing that talent before they put him into that substitute position. A lot of the teams here in Korea do have players uh, on their rosters or in their team houses that are not officially part of their rosters. Right. Uh, Scout also, SK Telecom has a third mid laner named Scout. Uh, because easy unit and fake aren't enough, you know. CJ has an entire B team, actually. Yeah. Like, that's where Roar came from on IM and they replaced him, but you see all these people named you know, CJ Trick and Max and uh, Helper on the ladder. Yep. Max now an official substitute, but everyone else on the CJ it's B been, team not actually able to be used by the team and champions. I mean, it's been pretty common throughout the history of Korean esports as Jin Air takes his easy dragon. Uh, that teams would have these sort of B teamers, you know, that live in the house, that practice with the players, but aren't like officially part of the team and don't really compete in anything. They're just there to sort of practice and And develop, yeah, yeah, develop until they get to the point where they can compete professionally. Yep. Now that's changing a little bit because uh, the, the Korean challenger scene this season has split into two different uh, divisions and they have a, a division for the B team of these champions teams. That's cool. So they actually do have more of a chance to compete this time around. And they're isolated away from the amateur teams too, so they don't just mm -hmm. come in and wreck them. Sounds fun. Probably not the best for competition. No, but it is good that both sides, both the amateur teams and the B teams, are gonna get a lot more competitive practice. Right. Well, right now we're kind of taking a look at the turrets for Samsung and seeing that the tier twos really haven't taken much damage yet. But on the other hand, Samsung has only taken one turret down total in the game. Yeah, and they keep falling further behind too. Now we're looking yeah. at that 5k gold lead, especially this top side, the rise really just not working out against the Valkai whatsoever. The repeated ganks by Chaser, shutting him down, not able to have any of those movement abilities to get away. So his lack of flash was really abused, and now Jin Air has a lot to show for it. Yeah, pretty much. Fury a bit behind in CS as well, too, just kind of trying to keep up. Nice ward, but Sweet finds it anyway. Here we go. Oh yeah, Trace, Trace caught in the top lane here. Sweet coming in to try to help out. He ults onto Eve. Hyla coming in to add his own damage in here. Fury mixing it up. Got to back away, though. He's down to about half health now. Sweet still taking a lot of damage. Eve getting very low here. Sweet gets killed by the death sentence from Wraith. Crown, meanwhile, dueling with Kuzan in the mid lane, or in the jungle, rather. Chaser comes back out, and overall, Samsung on the disengage. Kuzan could come over the wall. Ops not to. He has, like, no health remaining. Really risky engage from Jin Air. I, yeah. They are lucky they didn't get punished harder than they did. Trace going up. But Kuzan didn't have an angle. He was cut off, actually, by Crown in right above the Baron pit alongside Chaser, where they sort of lost a 1v2. So if you look at this right here, uh, as they start to turn around just due to their gold lead more than anything else, and their power spike with Porky, uh, the actual hook will kill <laughs> Sweet. Flash death sentence. That. That's great. Death sentence. And now we see picture in picture. The Baron is going down. Jin Air just and straight over and picks that one up. Right, as the recalls from Samsung go through. Yeah, everybody recalled, so Jin Air free and clear to go and take that Baron. And they do. Easy. Yep. Samsung certainly not having the easiest time themselves. And now they finally should be able to this should help kill some turrets. Yeah, huh. deal, deal with the coup de grace here. They, they have the tools at this point. They've got a great Corky power spike going on. And Fury, they've got good turtling potential. Got some, got the culling. Got a little bit of Azir there to help out, but the split push also from Rek'Sai here going to be difficult to deal with. A bit of Azir is not enough Azir. You need a lot of Azir <laughs> You do need case. a lot of Azir. Samsung yeah. trying to set up a pick. You need all the Azir you can manage. But they're going to have to go actually deal with these tier two turrets and they're going to have to pop out of the Raptor brush. Three lanes pushed up to the tier two right now. Rek'Sai actually backs off before autoing the tower. Just 
Shoves the minion lane in there. Now they're going to see Fury on the bottom side. Will this mean a, a dive on top? Well, we'll see. Chaser down in bottom. Wow, Kuzan getting a little bit poked from Crown. And, you know, Crown, I mean, if you look at his items, he's got some damage. Perhaps adding on the Void Staff in the near future here. But either way, he can certainly poke. Yes, he can. So, uh, yeah, they may be able to hold on to these Tier 2s even through this three-lane split push that's going down because they have the Lucian. Rek'Sai just going to return to lane right as Lucian leaves. So they finally have been caught <laughs> Samsung okay. with their pants down the bottom side of the map, and the jungler will probably get this Tier 2 turret. Yeah, it's starting to look that way. So Jinair Actually, just Le needs to kind of grind to victory now. LeBlanc should have gone and push the tier two in the bottom side instead of staying mid right there. Mm. She can't really deal damage as long as his ears there, but she could have helped get that tier two turret down to the bottom side, popping over the wall with the distortion. So Kuzan, eh, not, not making the most of that opportunity, I feel, but they get one turret, could have gotten two. Ah, maybe they'll get another one now. It could be. Baron buff getting closer to running out, and Samsung all grouped up in the mid lane, so I think it'll be a little bit too risky for Jin Air to engage on. And yeah, that's, that's already backed away. That's a little bit of a rookie mistake. If you know there's no defense on that bottom side and you have a choice as a highly mobile champion like LeBlanc to pop over a wall and go help your jungler split push that one down, you, you go down there. You don't just keep running into an Azir with Sand Soldier zoning you out and preventing you from autoing the tower. So you can see he's, he's still a little bit raw. Yep. Still a bit of a rookie. But I wouldn't call him a noob. Been a pretty solid game overall. Yeah, hasn't died yet. That's certainly commendable. I was gonna say, yeah, if you can if you can complete your first game professionally ever without dying, that's uh, that's a pretty good pretty good start. And here comes Pilot soloing that dragon out. He has the blade of the ruined king for the sustain. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. Trace gonna give him a little bit of a helping hand. And Either way, it's the third dragon already for Jin Air. Still could be looking at a while on this game, even with their large lead, just because of how well Samsung can turtle. Yeah. And if they turtle, lo ro uh, uh, if they turtle long enough, could maybe even end up in a situation where if a team fight goes poorly for Jin Air, they could lose a little bit too much. Uh, Rise is always terrifying, no matter what. He has an Abyssal Scepter now. Still no Seraph's Embrace, however. But that Abyssal, very helpful against the poke. Yeah, he could have probably bought it by now, but I think the Abyssal kind of took priority. Seems like a good pickup against this Jin Air team. Yeah, definitely is. I like the fact that they're committing so much with the Rek'Sai split push. If you notice, Rek'Sai has tunnels on both the bottom and the top side of the map, and in both sides of the jungle, both his side and their side. So there's a lot of Void Rush options. And they have to spread Samsung thin. True. Wow, okay. that's a lot of damage on the crown. Oh, man. Not even a Void Staff done for LeBlanc yet. They want Fury. Uh oh, and they're going to twist advance onto him. It's a long one because of the flash. Nice dredge line catching Fury, and they just blow him up. Corky doing a lot of damage. Kube coming down to try to help out Samsung. Pilot taking a big hit, but the turret taken out in favor of Jin Air anyway. Very smooth tower dive. Yeah. Right there, finding Fury all by his lonesome and just committing to that with Trace and Sweet and then backing out. Trace not needing to use his teleport there too, so that's another little edge for Jin Air in the next coming minutes. Very true. Okay, well back to sieging right now. I think they'll probably just back this off the suit and go for the Baron instead. They don't have the Righteous Glory up for a little bit. Or will they? Or will they? No fury to clear the wave. Yeah, why not? Well, they grab Kuzan, but it doesn't really matter. There goes the turret anyway. No one to add anything to that death sentence from Race, so Kuzan not really worried about it. Looks like he's going to recall about a minute until Baron. So it's a good time for Jin Air to go back and make sure that they have all the items they can get. Yeah, and just go for the Baron. Then you can push in for the kill. Kuve catching up a little bit in terms of farm, but still well behind where he needs to be to have a big impact on this game. Rise like takes out his book and reads it when he's collapsing a Rek'Sai tunnel. He's just so bored with what he's doing. 
gets a few sentences here in here or there, you know? They don't really seem to be like stomping the tunnel out or like kicking dirt back into it. They just sort of stand on it and, and like vibrate really fast. <laughs> it causes an actual mini earthquake. I guess the so. Region. Yeah. It's very dangerous to be near champions when they do that. Small localized earthquake. Well, it's dangerous to be in that tunnel when they do it anyway. <laughs> You stand next to him, you're like, oh, it's kind of annoying. It's, it's very fun. handy for Rek'Sai that her tunnels can't be collapsed while she's traveling through them. Yeah, that's true. Glad it's not like an instant kill or something out of Rek'Sai. <laughs> That'd be hilarious if it was, actually. That would be. But you have to get, like, three champions on it for it to be an instant kill. So that way you can play AoE <laughs> compositions where they have to choose between instant killing Rek'Sai and all grouping together so they get shockwaved. Everyone has, like, dashes, so you just dash onto the tunnel at the same time. See, then Rek'Sai just gets, he doesn't die, he just gets, or she doesn't die, she just gets knocked down to the, the underground cave level of Summoner's Rift, right? Here comes Trace, pings all over some wards. They really want this teleport flank. And he's big, too. Okay, tower's down, are they gonna go for it? No, that was no. not there. Oh, well. Sad times. You tried to build the hype, and I appreciate that. I'm sorry it didn't work out. Pilot was all alone in top lane, not going to contribute to that fight. Crown is taking a lot of damage from Kuzan. Kuzan likewise, though. Yeah. Well, you're, if you're going to dash in, you're probably going to get poked pretty hard by the sand. Trace soldiers. has been sitting there for about a full minute now. Yeah, well, you just you know how it is with these solo queue games. You have people going AFK and all that. It's really annoying. <laughs> Here we go. I found it. Report. Oh, never mind. Teleport coming in and gets knocked up immediately, though, by a crown. Wow, Wraith just gets evaporated, though. Trace turning around, going on to Kuve right away. A couple knockups keep him locked in for Pilot to pick up that double kill. And that should be all they need to maybe go after this Baron. Yeah, Eve is still up. Maybe there could be the chance of a steal, but having the Nidalee walk into that jungle against the Maokai is incredibly dangerous because Nidalee can be one shot. This is one of her problems as a jungler right now is that she doesn't add enough damage to offset how squishy she is. Right. So only a small element of danger for Jin Aaron taking this Baron. It ends up being no danger at all as nobody from Samsung even comes close. That's a 12k gold lead. So maybe Jin Aaron will play a little more aggressive, start to go for these dives now, really push forward to end this game. Dude, he's kind of having a party by Ryze's body there. He's kind of hanging out. It's with a hot party spot, Ryze's corpse. That's right. Haven't you been to a party at Ryze's corpse, Noah? Dance. I've danced the night away <laughs> over Ryze's corpse many a time, <laughs> Monte Cristo. That's right. I just don't see enough of the upside on this Ryze. I mean, last game, Ryze was fine, but it wasn't like what Ryze was doing was the reason why they were winning the game. And if you just repeatedly gank Ryze, he can do hardly anything at all. Sure enough. Then when he's dead, you can really annoying by, like, writing stuff on his scrolls, you know? Like, I, I would, like, write Doa rules with, like, a Z on his big scroll. <laughs> he hates that. Does, messes up all his incantations. That's right. He's just reading a spell along, and then all of a sudden he blurts out Doa's like, rules, and then he shakes his... Karnak Doa rules. Wait, no, not again! <laughs> he shakes his fist at the sky. Yep. There's Kuzan. You're right. That was Kuzan. And a fourth dragon now. Good debut. Good debut from Kuzan. Yeah, not bad at all. We'll see if they play him against a team that's not Samsung. <laughs> Fair enough. And here uh -oh. comes Samsung. Oh, boy. With oh, hi. <laughs> Minions, no, you gave, gave us away. They would have been hidden if it weren't for those minions coming down the lane. Dastardly minions, I always know. giving away your position. You never expect that. Oh, you, you expect it every 30 seconds. It's actually quite predictable. <laughs> well, apparently Samsung wasn't <laughs> expecting it. We'll just wait here. Until, oh, that's right, minions. Oh. Wow, Jin Air really playing this one passive. Rek'Sai not even pushing up to the turret. Instead, going for the Krugs instead of empowering that minion way further. Now, finally, walking up. They just want to rub it in Samsung's face, you know? They're like, we're going to make get you... It. They have Flash on Maokai. They could easily dive in tower right now. I don't know. Flash WM Maokai. Trace is so tanky. They just want to break Samsung emotionally, you know? Before they break their nexus. Tire him out. 
it's not enough to just, Kuzan's like, this is my first game. I don't want to just win. I want to break them. Kuzan's so evil. Wow, Kuzan. I never knew. Wow. What a villain. Scary guy. It's Kuvan. Kuzan, whatever his name is. The Dark Prince of Jenner. <laughs> he really looks like a Dark Prince. When That's I look at his right. face, it really just screams Dark Prince. He's got a sinister look about him. Oh, there we go. Oh, he's gone. Who's on the Dark Prince claims another victim. <laughs> oh, they're chasing, oh, nice. though. Yeah, even Crown coming in. Oh, the Dark Prince, though, able to take out that turret. Inhibitor goes down, meanwhile, in bot lane. And there's the shutdown gold for Wraith, actually. But they lose an inhibitor on that kill, so probably not worth. And now Kuzan just getting a Banshee's Veil for good measure. Why not? Make sure you can't get tagged by those spears and then the rune have prisons. that pounce, close the gap. It's no fun. Celebration Sweeper. There might have been a ward there. Celebratory sweeper. That's no right. one expects that one. Nope. Yeah, put up. There aren't any disco balls in this game, so that's usually what people use. Well, there's no Oriana right now, anyway. For the party, it rises corpse. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it is a great party. Well, they he he's got like a shiny kind of bald head, so they just like shine a Lux just like shines a light on him and it reflects. And <laughs> has the same kind of effect. Kind of morbid, but it works, you know. But right. there's nothing but gallows humor to be had in the League of Legends. It's true. Fighting day and night. Forever. A depressing prospect. Just an endless cycle of death and rebirth. That's right. The, the Buddhists were right. Once the summoners <laughs> made us fight, now we are broken and fight only because it is all we know. <laughs> Although it is just a matter of perspective. This would, you know, the reality of Buddhism and the cycle of rebirth is really just Viking heaven, where they just fight and kill each other and then come back to life and feast and drink and fight and kill each other again. So Sounds pretty just, sweet, man. Just, just about how you look at it. Is this Valhalla <laughs> or is this the wheel of suffering? They're going to show knows? up shiny and chrome. <laughs> Don't worry. Well, here we go. Another inhibitor under threat. Death sentence. Not connecting for Wraith. And Jynair. Trying their best, well, maybe not their best, but trying to end it. And yeah, there is an Azir turret for extra turgling potency. Right. Why not? Well, because we wanted this game to end, Doa. That's why not. Uh, well, I appreciate Samsung, you know, fighting it to the bitter <laughs> end, right? Not going down without a maybe fight. Maybe going to a third Baron for the Jyn Air Green Wings. Quite possible. Maybe that uh, fifth dragon as well, too. See, Jyn Air, this is the whole plan. They're just delaying it long enough so that they can also get five dragons in their win <laughs> in this best of three. More dragons, more better. Yep. Oh, the, the Azir turret almost dead it's, at long last. His pilot it's getting there. takes a spear, but just heals up off the minion wave. See, if you throw a spear into the rotors on Corky's little helicopter thing, that does a lot of damage, man. That can really mess up the aerodynamics. Oh, oh Death Sentence just out of range. And yeah. there's another inhibitor falling. A convenient 30 seconds before the dragon. 40 seconds. 40 seconds before the dragon. 30 seconds before the Baron, excuse right. me. Got it straight now. Nice. Nice, ooh. Everyone recalling. Nope, just kidding. He's got to go and take a walk in mid lane. Got to protect that dragon. Yeah, got to get over there. Well Check out that blue buff. Chaser going to take it. Yep. And it's a bit awkward, actually. Will Samson get their second turn of the game? It is barely hanging by a thread. And there's the dragon up at six seconds. Samsung really committing to this, despite the fact that minions are knocking on the door of their base right now. Hey, they've got to do something. They catch sweet. Wow, OK. Should have played Bard, buddy. Get a magical journey your way out of that one. And I guess Samsung gets the dragon. Ooh, that was a close call with that uh, Phosphorus Bomb, actually. But they got it, and they're going to be able to get back to the base in time to take out these minions, too. You know what you wanted, Doa? What did I want? This game to be longer. I wanted that <laughs> so bad. You have no idea. 
Well, Sweet gets caught out a little bit right there trying to ward, and he thought it was safe because Chaser, I don't know why he thought it was safe. There should have been Tremor Sense there on that. Yeah. From the Rek'Sai. Instead, they're just going to go for the four-man Baron. Sweet, you don't get any. You were the one who face-checked the Dragon. He doesn't deserve it. Although his first blood was pretty awesome this game. It was. It was good. That was good. Think they're going to delay it for six more seconds? Nah. No. Yes. Yeah. Wow. That is they really risky. Wow. What a great team that was. They really care about their support. <laughs> I'm surprised. Sure, Kuzan was defending the perimeter, but had a Nidalee been able to <laughs> sneak through that, that would and have been just hilarious, flash actually. smite at the pit, it had 200 HP. Yeah. It would have been really, really sad. I think it would have been the opposite of sad. <laughs> I think it would have been I would have really laughed for like a good minute. It would, have that made, one. it would have made me very happy. I mean, Diddley can go over a bunch of walls and it's pretty fast. You don't know when that sneaky cougar is going to get in your pit. <laughs> okay. You like my sentence? I think that was, <laughs> I think it was worded beautifully. It was, uh, I don't think anyone could be confused about exactly what you were talking about. Which is Nidalee stealing Baron. <laughs> Nothing else. I like to make very creative phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's good. That are certainly not euphemisms. Someday when we have like some intro <laughs> video for you and like what you do, we need to use that clip. <laughs> you saying that. Someone asks what Monte Cristo does. Now we know. Well, Trace, he's like a really big fan of Star Trek, so he wants to get hit with those spears. He wants that Klingon logo above his head as much as possible. Kapla. Kapla. <laughs> That's All right. right. Are we are we done with this game yet, Dylan? <laughs> Not yet. No Kapla yet for Janair. <laughs> and there goes the mid inhibitor. Now they have to take out the bottom one. Gotta get, gotta catch them all. Turret, Whoa. turret mon, inhibitor mon. Well, there's super minions on the Nexus right now. Run away. Oh, here we go. Never mind. Opposite run away. They go in. Emperor's Divide pushes back Jyn Air a little bit. Culling comes in. Who's on? Actually, Jyn Air taking a lot of damage, but they should be able to get that health back very quickly. Oh, flash from Kubi. They get the Rune Prison out of Kuzan. Meanwhile, the Nexus turret goes down. But they push, push Jyn Air right out of the base. Get out of there. Good job, guys. I'm Everyone proud. gonna recall right now. Yep. For one of the slowest kills ever. Yeah. I thought... I thought the fatalities in Mortal Kombat were agonizing. Not really. They're over quite quickly, actually. I wish, this, I wish this was some sort of brutal fatality, Doa. This is like a... Uh, this is death by a thousand cuts right here. It is, man. This is like uh, like when the Boltons in Game of Thrones take someone out, man. <laughs> They're just like peeling the skin off piece by piece. Gross. Samsung being flayed alive here. <laughs> Next game, Samsung's gonna come into the lobby and it's gonna be like Reek Crown, Reek Eve, <laughs> Reek Fury. <laughs> okay, I think this might be it. Don't get your hopes up, there's an Azir turret. <laughs> no! <laughs> to the bitter end. Tonight we dine in hell. <laughs> well, now we have to wait oh, for more right. super minions. Nice job. Oh, boy. oh, top inhibitor's back. Better go take it out. They should. <laughs> get those inhibitors. Get the double super minions rolling once again. That's right. You know, it's really like seven versus five with all those sand soldiers. It's not fair, is it? Got no. A couple man advantage. It is. Could be actually getting pretty tanky now. Yeah. All right. One more Nexus turn remaining. Jyn Air going in. Kube taking a lot of damage from Kuzan. They're going to get Wraith on the way out here. Jyn Air having to back away, taking a lot of damage in the meantime. And look at this. Look at this Samsung team, man. Have we reached the event horizon where Ryze becomes this unstoppable god? Has that happened? Uh, I, he's definitely a big threat right now, but it it's is. a 14,000 oh. gold lead, and they're still having – the Azir is really <laughs> just – look, they finally figured it out. There we go. They can just teleport right on top of that Nexus turret. All right, kill on the crown. <laughs> that happened. Kuzan doing a lot of damage. Now the Nexus is being focused down. They're going to take Sweet down one more time. Trace, a lot of damage there. Chaser coming in as well. Eve back to the fountain where he will throw Spears of Sadness. 
And Fury just autoing. There we go. Okay, so we're 1-1 now. Wow. Well, All tied up. Took a while for Jenner to take out that game, but sure they did. played a methodical one where they were constantly in the lead, never really behind, never taking too many risks, controlling all the objectives. So they uh, they they pull it out in the end. They perhaps gave Rise a little bit too much time to get tanky by the end of that game and really start to be a, a threat in terms of their own ability to close it out. What was with the formal handshake with Trace there from the coach of the end? It's like, oh. <laughs> Thank you for playing that Maokai, well done, sir. sir. Well done. Yeah. It's like, oh, jolly good. <laughs> well, good game from Jin Air and Samsung again. They chose a similar style of composition, but this time without some pieces that enabled their composition to work, such as Sivir and Alistair in that last game. That's Do they okay. have